What's going on you guys and welcome back to the A-Ray Show. Let's be honest, over the past few weeks, it's been quite brutal. We've been going through a lot of different types of hurt in the stock market and cryptocurrency market. I mean, let's take a look at Bitcoin over the past year. So over the past year, we were sitting at about 32,000. That's where we were about a year ago. To date, as of recording today is uh, January 22nd, we are sitting at 35,000 and it feels like we're breaking through support after support after support so who knows where we're gonna be tomorrow I mean look at this dramatic drop in the matter of two three days yeah it's been pretty brutal and if you're trading or swing trading Bitcoin you don't feel good right now but rest assured in this video I'm gonna be talking about a few catalysts that will actually make you feel a little bit better no guarantees of course and not a financial advisor but I definitely hope that these catalysts do come true because these are positive catalysts and hopefully we'll see Bitcoin to the moon soon. So anyways, with that being said, guys, if you guys want to see my positive catalysts and my takes, stay tuned and you guys already know, cue that intro. Let's start off this video with the biggest number one catalyst that could send Bitcoin to the moon. And that would be none other than a spot Bitcoin ETF. So if you guys don't know what a spot Bitcoin ETF is, basically what is what it is, is it lets you kind of mimic Bitcoin's price through an ETF. So this really helps a lot of different investors buy Bitcoin themselves without actually owning Bitcoin. You're just owning the ETF. And at the same time, if you think about it, a lot of people don't even know how to buy cryptocurrencies in general, especially the older generation. They don't really have Robinhood where you can just buy crypto right there. They don't really know about Coinbase. A lot of them are stuck with their old banking systems like JP Morgan or even Merrill Lynch or any of those, Fidelity, for example. A lot of people have them and they don't know how to buy cryptos at all. A lot of older people still think they're scam. Even the newer and younger generations still think that cryptocurrency is a scam. But if the banking system adopts this situation and adopts, okay, cryptocurrency could really be the next thing, the next new thing, then of course this Bitcoin ETF would skyrocket because not only would all the older generation people that are on the old banking systems be able to buy into Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, but also the institutions that have yet to actually buy Bitcoin and cryptocurrency too. So this would actually in turn really help the Bitcoin market rise. And this would be great, especially because all these new hands, all these new people are buying Bitcoin. I mean, what more could you ask for? And with that being said, this hopefully will come in 2022. As you guys can see from this article, which I'll link in the description down below, we're looking at a deadline of March 16th. So if everything goes well, we are hoping for this Bitcoin spot ETF, which would just be amazing. I mean, this is the number one biggest catalyst. This could honestly get Bitcoin rising like you could probably hope for a 50 percent rise just from this bitcoin spot etf being announced and again there's no 100 percent guarantee that this is going to happen again not a financial advisor these are just my opinions and takes but i can definitely see this happening on to the next so for the next biggest catalyst we have this chart over here and if you're not familiar with this chart this is the stock to flow model for bitcoin and what the stock to flow model is is basically it's just a measure of the current stock of an asset in this case bitcoin which is going to be uh, pushed against the flow of a new production or how much it is mined this year so Basically, as most of you guys know, Bitcoin is slowly getting mined up. It's a limited resource where there's about 21 million Bitcoin out there, which to date about 18 and a half around there, just an estimate has already been mined. So it's going to be simple economics, you know, supply and demand. We're not going to go too much into detail there. And if you guys want me to, let me know. I'll make a video about that definitely in the future. But anyways, basically all it's saying is, the more that's being mined up and the more that's in circulation, one day this is going to come to an end, unlike where the US dollar can always be, I guess, produced and minted over and over again. There's a limited amount. So basically, simple economics, supply and demand. There's going to be a day when there's no more Bitcoin being able to mine. And this in turn will hopefully be able to boost Bitcoin's uh, price over time and this is kind of similar to gold where it's also a limited resource in the world I guess you can't really get any more gold after there's no more gold left and that's why it's kind of a store of value And that's one of the biggest and most greatest appeals about Bitcoin. So anyways Let's take a look at this chart over here. So this is basically the price movement of Bitcoin all this rainbow colored lines and 
basically the darker it is so like red all the way down to blue so red would be how many days are left to the happening which is something that we'll talk about a little bit later and then blue would be in how much days are left like less days are left until the demanding so red would be more days and blue would be in less days so this lighter blue line over here represents the stock to flow model and as you guys can see it's been pretty accurate i mean there's been times we were under it there's been times we've been over it but for the most part, we've been kind of sticking with the line. So if all things are said and done, around 2025, we are expecting about a, let's see, 389,000 price of Bitcoin, which is nuts. I mean, even to date right now, it's we're a little bit behind. I mean, especially with that giant sell-off that we've been having over the past few days. But let's be honest, we're at sitting at about 36,000 right now. Bitcoin, according to the stock to flow model, is going to be 107,000. If all else stays remains true with the stock to flow model, even if we don't get to the same price, we should still see the same price appreciation. So hopefully that's a huge catalyst. You know, for the most part, it's been extremely accurate. I mean, there's been times we've been well above the line. There's been times we've been well below the line. This could be a time, and especially because of all the other pressures that we're getting on the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency market from regulations to uh, a sell-off. A lot of people are going through uh, shortages of money, so they're taking out a lot of stocks and trying to keep up with their lifestyle, especially because of the whole pandemic. But anyways... Even with that being said, and all the inflationary pressures that are being there, I still think that we're going to be able to push up and hopefully be able to continue our trajectory on the stock to flow model. So that's another huge positive catalyst that a lot of people are hoping for, myself included. And I do think that we're going to be able to see this point in time where we're back up to the stock to flow model. Anyways, with that being said, let's hop into the next one. So more catalysts that I'm looking at is the mainstream adoption of Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, and Ethereum. So for those of you guys that don't know, Bitcoin was initially accepted by Tesla and Elon Musk at one point, and this was announced back in March of 2021. And as you guys can see from the beginning of March, when this was kind of announced, we were at 48,000, and then we boosted it all the way to about 63-ish thousand, just on the announcement alone. Of course, there was a lot of euphoria because of the announcement, but also because of some other factors. That's one of the reasons why Bitcoin rose. And then Elon Musk later on announced that, that Tesla was no longer accepting it, again, because of the impact that it has on the environment. So, of course, that makes sense in Tesla's standpoint because their company is looking at the future. They're looking to kind of save the world. They're trying to reduce emissions. So it doesn't really make sense. But the good news is as time goes on and on, and of course, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, they evolve a lot faster than a lot of companies and a lot, of, a lot of other things out there. So they've been finding new ways to become more renewable. And hopefully, man, Elon Musk said that Tesla will most likely start to accept Bitcoin again. And that would be awesome, especially if it's, first of all, more economically or environmentally friendly. And also, if all these companies start to jump on that bag wagon once again, and all these other companies are starting to use Ethereum and the blockchain network and all these other cryptocurrencies to start with NFTs, start with, you know, for example, Decentraland, you know, we, we are at the world, we're starting that metaverse. So there's a lot of mainstream adoption potential out there. Man, I think the biggest one out there is going to be if Tesla starts to accept Bitcoin again. I feel like this will cause a lot more euphoria once again, and this will help the Bitcoin price rise once again. So that's another one that I'm looking at. Of course, this could be anything. It could even be the government start to adopt some cryptocurrency inside of their, I guess, their way of functionality. If they're starting to accept Bitcoin or not Bitcoin, but any other cryptocurrency, or if they form their own, I mean, that would be great. I definitely think that would be a huge positive catalyst. Of course, there's no way of seeing this. It's just a prediction of mine, but who knows? We'll see. But anyways, let's get on to the fourth and final biggest catalyst, in my opinion. This final catalyst is a little bit out there, but I actually think this is a positive catalyst. And that would be all the negative sentiment that we're getting about Bitcoin and this giant dip. And it just feels like a lot of people and the majority of people, if you go on stock tweets, Twitter, or pretty much any other social media site that are talking about investments, they are saying that Bitcoin is going down to zero. There's no usability. Bitcoin sucks. Cryptocurrency is not the future, this and that. Of course, there's still a lot of other bulls out there like myself. But this is actually a huge positive catalyst because it kind of goes into the psychological effects of an investor. A lot of people will see this giant drop off that we're also getting now. 
and think, okay, this is the end of Bitcoin. We were in a bubble. But in my opinion, this really signals that this could be kind of a reversal. And the more people that are negative, it actually could mean the better time to buy in actually is. And just to kind of preface this, I mean, we all know that famous Warren Buffett quote where it goes, when others are fearful, be greedy. So that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm buying tons of Bitcoin and buying tons of Ethereum. I think I'm stacked up about four Ethereum as of now. And I'll show you guys that later for proof. But anyways, with that being said, I definitely loaded up. I could have got a better timing, but I didn't. But anyways, I definitely think that this psychological effect on investors could actually somewhat signal a positive catalyst because, I mean, the more people that are negative and fearful, the more potential that we can actually get for a bounce back. So who knows? All it really takes is one positive catalyst to get the ball rolling. We'll see. Anyways, let me know your guys' opinion down below. If you have any questions or any comments about this Bitcoin video or about this cryptocurrency video, definitely leave a comment down below. And if you found any value, please hit the like button, subscribe. It really does mean a lot. We're trying to get the ball rolling on this channel. So hopefully this video is helpful and you guys are going to be buying the dip like myself over here. As you guys can see, I have an average cost of 3000 which is a little bit high, but we're still trying to continuously buy the dip. I kind of loaded up as soon as it went to about 3000 I got a little bit greedy, I'm not going to lie, and impatient. But again, don't look at me. Maybe, I mean, maybe my mistakes will help you guys. We'll see at the end of the day. And I just want to show you guys that I do have almost about 5 Ethereum, and I'm not just talking out of my ass. I definitely do believe that this is going to rebound, not just in Bitcoin, but also Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies as well. My two favorite are, of course, Bitcoin and Ethereum. I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll get a, a little bit of a rebound in Dogecoin for all my Dogecoin investors out there. But anyways, that's going to be pretty much it for this video. And also, before you guys roast me for using Robinhood, I just like to use Robinhood for swing trades. I'm hopefully looking to swing out of this position when we get a little bit higher, take those profits, and then eventually wait for another dip so then I can buy into my main account where I keep my cryptocurrencies. That would be Coinbase. And by the way, all the links for these, if you want to get started with this, will be in the description down below. I also have a video on Coinbase if you want to know a little bit more and i'll leave that on the top right over here but anyways that's gonna be it for this video once again please 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 leave me a like if you guys enjoyed this comment and please subscribe if you guys enjoyed my videos and hopefully you guys were able to get value but that's it i'm gonna stop rambling and guys remember everybody eats and hopefully bitcoin and cryptocurrency to the moon